H3, digestion of the adipose tissue. Collect the adipose tissue into the sterile yellow cut 70ml container in the kit. Finally cut the tissue with sterile scissors in the yellow cut container until the pieces of adipose are between 2 to 4 millimetres in size. Notice that she placed the lid of that cup down. You don't want to place it up. You don't want it collecting bacteria from the air. We're going to have some um, room air exposure in this process. The whole process, there's about 10 minutes of room air exposure, and that's why we use antibiotics in the wash. Um, we have less exposure during this process than we have during the surgery itself. And I know a lot of surgeons out there have done joints and lots of surgeries where we've had a lot more time exposed to the air than 10 minutes. Again, make sure you mix up these vials every time before you pull up the solutions into syringes. Using a sterile 1 mil syringe and needle. Ensure there are no air bubbles in the syringe and mix the vials just prior to use. We're starting the pre-digestion process. We're mincing up the fat and we're adding solutions to start the pre-digestion so we can incubate it. Add solution A using a 20 ml sterile syringe and needle to the adipose tissue until the total volume in the tube reaches 40 ml. The bottom of the meniscus... We all know how to read a meniscus, so just bring that fluid solution up to 40 ml. So all of them will be uniform. If you're doing three of these at a time, four of these at a time, every vial will have 40 mLs before it goes into the incubator. Mix the contents well by inverting the tube and place in the oscillator. We're not shaking these real hard. We're just creating a vortex and we're mixing it up real well. We want it to digest. The hot water bath has been pre-warmed. Which is normal body temperature, 98.6 degrees. You can check it with a, a digital thermometer periodically. Every 10 to 15 minutes and invert or shake the tube and place back into the water bath as the contents will settle down in the tube. After 45 minutes, add 4 mils of the contents of solution E Medivet to the adipose using a 10 mil Again, spoon. make sure you mix up vial E very well before you pull it out. This is kind of thick. I use an 18 gauge needle for this um, so that I can get it all out. Four mLs exactly. Mix well by inverting the tube and incubate for a further 15 Solution E is a thick solution, so you need to mix it quite well before you put it back in there. You'll be able to see with your naked eye um, just mix it up well before you put it back in the incubator for 15 minutes. That's going to help separate out the stem cells and the stromal vascular fraction. You should now see three layers in the tube. The top yellow or clear layer, the middle layer, a white fibrous layer, and the bottom layer, which is red and contains That's the, the gold cell mine, pellet. that cell pellet at the bottom and that red Place fluid. Place the sterile mixing cannula firmly on the end of a 20 mil syringe and slide the end of the cannula to the bottom of the I tube. pull up a little bit of air in that oh, syringe, so when I go through that white connective tissue, I push that air out so I don't get any connective tissue down there. Up in the syringe. And then I just gently scrape the inside of that, uh, the bottom of that cone to loosen up that pellet as I'm aspirating to try to pull up that entire pellet. Don't worry if you can't get every last drop of it. You're getting millions of stem cells. Do not pull up connective tissue into your syringe because it will clog up the filters and it will make it more difficult down the road. So when you get down to the end of that tube right there at the top where it starts to narrow, that's enough. Stop. I know you're going to be tempted to want to get more out of there. Don't do it. You don't need to. You have plenty of stem cells in that syringe. Which may have become stuck to the side of the conical part of the tube. Expel all the contents of the syringe into a new 50 ml tube. Now when you take these filters out of the package, once in a while they're not attached, they're separated. So make sure by looking at another pack that you're putting them together properly. That's happened once. You just want to make sure that that, that large 
uh, spout is is on the bottom. There's a little white plug on the uh, other side. You want to make sure that that white plug is above that, that spout. That's just in case it's come apart and you have to put it back together. You want it to be the right way. Otherwise, when you suction it, it'll go right into your, um, your pump. Unscrew your stereo flip and place Now, right here, what if you couldn't get it all filtered through because you accidentally pulled up some connective tissue? You can't get it to filter through. Do you discard that unused portion, that unfiltered portion? Absolutely not. You'll be able to unscrew that stereo flip container and pour it back in. We're going to do another filtering process. So don't waste the cells. Just unscrew it and pour it back into the vial. We will be filtering it again. Don't worry. Remove the supination using the larger transfer pipette without disturbing the cell pellet at the bottom, leaving approximately 1 to 3 mils. Resuspend the cell pellet in the 1 to 3 mils using the same transfer pipette. It's very important when you resuspend it that you make it homogeneous. You don't want to leave that kind of uh, red blood cell pellet down there. You want to mix it up really well. Because once you add this fluid, the 20 mLs of fluid, it's going to be harder to make it a homogeneous solution. So do it well before you add that fluid. You can do it with the 20 mLs, but um, it's a lot easier if you do it first. F using a sterile 20 ml syringe and needle to the cell pellet. Then using a small... You can actually put the top back on and, and mix it up, you know, with your hand. Now here we go again with the filter. Make sure that they're put together properly. See that little white plug? That goes on the top. It goes above that little spout that comes out. When you flip it over, the longer spout should be on the bottom, the white plug should be on the top. ...and place the vacuum pump onto the spigot and create a vacuum by pumping. This is a smaller filter, and again, like I said before, this filter process will get the rest of it. It makes it very, very safe for intravenous injection. And guess what? We're going to use a HEMA filter anyway, so we don't have to worry about causing an embolism. Transfer all the solution containing the cells to the 15 ml tube using a small transfer pipette. This whole process is a very easy step-by-step -step process. Centrifuge the adipose tissue at 2300 RPM for 10 minutes. After we did the first few, we asked our technicians what was hard about this. And Every single time, the technician said nothing. It's just doing it once or twice. It's easy. Remove all the supernatant without disturbing the cell pellet, down to approximately 0.5 mils. Add the partially dissolved PRP fraction into the cell pellet using the same... I bring it up to 2 mLs. I like the PRP. I like all the growth factors. They provide many, many benefits to the stem cells and the stromovascular fraction. So I always bring it up to 2.0 mLs, and then what I'm not going to use in the joints, I give the rest intravenously. I put it into a bag of uh, sterile saline solution. I usually minimize that bag down to 100 mLs or maybe 50 mLs if it's a real small dog. And, uh, and I don't waste them. I give them intravenously. And switch on for 20 minutes. 